Okay, first portage behind me, literally. On to the next eight. Well, there's this nice uh, beaver pond here, but it's not where I'm supposed to be. And I just hauled over two loads of gear and then checked the GPS. And I have gone down here, portage is up there. So this stuff is coming back once it came. And uh, yeah, good thing I have GPS. I'm at the 290 meter portage and I just took one load up where I thought the trail was, up this way, and uh, I was seriously concerned because I wasn't sure that I would be able to get the canoe up that safely. That is uh, a recipe for falling backwards with a canoe landing on your head. Uh, thankfully, the trail is actually here. And it's, uh, it's better. Still fairly steep as indicated on the map, but uh, <laughs> a lot better than the cliff there. I'm rapidly getting exhausted here. A little steep section and watching that first portage, or the second one I guess. And the sun is just beating down today. It's brutal. I think that's the worst part of it. I've drunk like two liters of water since I started at 1.30 and now, I don't know what time it is, maybe 5. <sighs> I don't know if I'm going to make it to Scrabble, really. We'll see. Yeah. Bugs are picking up steam too as the, uh, as the sun starts to get a little lower. Just saw a couple of deer bound off over there. This is terribly slow travel through the Digby Creek. There are all kinds of mini log jams like these, which don't look like much, but they're hard to get over, almost like mini beaver dams. And then, uh, yeah, I haven't even gotten to the beaver dams yet, but uh, sun's getting a lot lower now. It's behind the trees. It's uh, about seven. And I'm getting there real slow. I'm really struggling to locate this portage. I've been scouting for like 15-20 minutes. Can't find it. There's a big pile of fresh bear poop, but no trail. And it's getting later, about 8 now. Still have a ways to go. and. Uh, I, I guess I'm just going to go up this way and figure it out in the creek there. It looks impossible and unnavigable, but I have no other option right now. The creek did not last long. It's closed up on me. I have no option but to proceed at this point, so I'm going to get my sandals on, step in here where it's like just absolute muck. I don't know how I'm going to get a foothold uh, or just even avoid sinking down. Uh, and drag through this for I don't know how long. It's quarter after nine. I'm still not really close to my campsite and I'm getting eaten alive. Uh, this is awful. The water's black now so I can't even see what I'm doing. It's completely dark now and this is just a really unpleasant kind of scary situation. Uh, cause I, I can't get, I can't get there. I absolutely can't. I'm going to come back on this opening, which is not as open as it looks. It's covered in vegetation. I'm in a swarm of mosquitoes here. It's hard to film. And I'm going to hope there's some like flat rock that I can camp on cause I can't get there. <sighs> I'm finally safe from the mosquitoes and, uh, Hopefully other things, because there are definitely some things going bump in the night right now, and I hope they're be just beavers. And uh, that was just absolutely grueling. Awful. I didn't have time to film anything, but uh, there were just obstructions in Digby Creek every probably 100 meters, and I had to step out and either step onto a log, a submerged log, a beaver dam, 
a thick mat of vegetation and soil uh, but that was some of the worst paddling I've ever had to do and then once it got dark it just became impossible because you can't find the channel and the channels already awful in the first place that was a brutal one well I'm waking up to decent conditions so that's a relief and uh, time for some food too after not eating uh, dinner last night. I'm seeing camp for the first time this morning. It's too dark to make anything out last night. Skeeters. This is what it's like down here. Very thick vegetation. Floating mats here. Finally time to go for that dip that I wanted to take last night uh, to rinse off my filth and sweat and squashed bugs. Uh, so I'm going to jump in the water here. That's going to feel great with my clothes to get them washed off too. Woohoo! <laughs> oh, it's fantastic swimming. It's so nice. Oh. <laughs> It feels so good. Oh yeah. Now for some food. That swim felt just amazing. And now I'm refueling. Uh, I've got water filtering and I'm going to drink a ton of that. Got the last of my, <laughs> my swamp water. <laughs> it's making me choke thinking about it. <laughs> or that's just the crackers. I got crackers and boursin going. I'm gonna eat the whole brick of Borsan, obviously. And uh, it's just amazing the low to high that you can go to in the backcountry. This is as good as it gets right now, and for some reason there are hardly any bugs here. There have been so many everywhere. And now, in my moment of tranquility, they are leaving me alone. So it's awesome. Well, that wind kicking up did signify the rain coming on and uh, it, it was just perfect. I got everything done that I needed to. Camp is set up and uh, now I can ride it out here and rest, read, chill out. The wind is howling now. Just picked up in a few seconds like crazy. I better get in the tent. It could start absolutely pouring. Getting there. Thanks, buddy. It's about 8 o'clock here on Scrabble Lake, and I'm just passing through the narrows uh, into the east arm of the lake. Bugs aren't too bad, and the temperature is beautiful, so just uh, taking the opportunity while I can because tomorrow and the following day might be pretty rainy. Nice rock here along the narrows. Wolves. That's awesome.
It is just a nasty day today. Very windy and there's a heavy mist on the air which the wind is just whipping along. It has been a tremendously slow day. Um, I, every time I've tried to do something, uh, I've just been impeded by the rain and or wind. So, I've just been pretty cooped up. There's a huge turtle in the water here. Portage is behind me and uh, three hours of sleep or so behind me <laughs> and now to paddle head lake into a direct headwind. It is mid-August and I am on Dunlop Lake, just past the access point, north of Elliott Lake. And I am about to start one of the most anticipated trips of this year for me, uh, which is the Dunlop Lake route. This is um, a trout trip. The lakes have brook trout, lake trout, and splake, some of them. Well, I'm uh, past Swamp Lake and onto the final of four portages for today. Uh, I'll be at Lower Upper Mace Lake in, uh, I don't know, 15 minutes after I get the gear across and then I can set up camp on one of at least five campsites on that uh, lake and then I can nap. I am zonked. Well, camp is made and I'm just eating some hummus, spicy hummus with uh, some naan I just toasted up which is a really simple but awesome dinner. And uh, it's 7 o'clock now, so uh, I'm not going to nap. There's no point at this, at this point. Uh, so I'll go for a fish in a bit. Uh, there, there's another party on the, on the lake. I think it's a group of four, uh, which is cool. I've had enough lakes to myself lately. I'm good to share, share one. Uh, so maybe I'll run into them. Maybe they're fishing. I had an amazing 10-hour sleep last night, and now I'm ready for some fishing. No. No. Oh no. Oh. Oh, that's devastating. I just lost a big a big splake. Oh man. I I got to look at it.
finally on my fifth bite I kept one. I was able to keep one. And it's a nice uh, nice flake, probably two pounds. And that guy's gonna be lunch. I got the fish all cleaned up on the other shore. And uh, I built this fire before I left in anticipation of cooking fish, so it's nice now. All I have to do is hit the ignition. I've never had splake before, but uh, I have a feeling it's going to be a lot like lake trout. Uh, so here we go. Lake trout is my favorite fish to eat. Mmm. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. That's amazing. It's really flaky. It's falling apart. Oh man. Oh. Fish on. This one was on the three-way swivel. Trolling, obviously. Oh, oh there's a run. <laughs> down now. Definitely has my attention. <laughs> Still can't see it. It won't come up. <laughs> and my forearm's starting to feel that feeling where there's probably something decent. This is interesting. <laughs> the rod's bent over. Oh, they're finally getting some. Finally let up a bit. Holy cow. This has to be a decent fish. Oh yeah. Wow. Wow. This is interesting. <laughs> what is this? Meanwhile, I'm just getting blown across the, the bay. Uh oh, uh oh, it's coming up. I'm, I can see him a little bit. Not a good look though. And now he's. Oh, oh man, please come in. Oh, oh my. Oh, please. No, no. Yes. <laughs> he's in the net. Man, it looks like a lake trout. Lake trout here, it's not deep enough. Obviously, splake kind of looked like lake trout, but that fought like a lake trout and it looks like a lake trout and it's got a big tail. It's not giant, but it's a nice fish. Okay, I gotta get this fish down quickly, so I'm gonna get it out quick and let it go quick because it needs to get back down to the cold water. Oh, that's so nice. I don't know how this isn't a lake trout. It absolutely looks like a lake trout. Anyway, I gotta let it go. And it's gone. <laughs> that was fun. That was a really fun battle. Another fish on. This is an absolute honey hole. Uh, that'd be a lake trout. There's no way. I'm gonna try and get some good shots of it here for confirmation later. But that has to be a lake trout. Go on, go deep. 
Yep, straight down. Okay, well that's really interesting that there are lake trout in a lake that is barely over 40 feet. Shallowest lakes that I've ever seen holding lake trout are at least 60 feet. Man, that was such an awesome day. Really can't ask for much more. I've barely seen a bug all day and uh, and it's it's dusk and there aren't any even right now and that's amazing so nice I haven't been able to enjoy a bonfire hardly in weeks many weeks uh, on the portage yesterday I was able to wear shorts I haven't done that all summer because it's just not worth having the bugs biting your legs What a morning to be alive. So beautiful. Well, I was about to take this campsite, or look at it anyway, uh, but there's a porcupine on it, a big one. So, what's protocol here? Does he have the site? Can I try later? Pretty cool. It's a big one. I am heading down the uh, the Blind River. This is in Blind River Provincial Park. I'm heading down that way. So I want to see how far down I can get this river and maybe connect it and uh, extend this loop or you know have an alternate for it uh, and then come back up uh, another river which is all part of the Blind River system and that would take me into Pathfinder Lake. So uh, just gonna see how far I get it here. Well, I just decided that I wasn't gonna do it, and then my sense of wanderlust was like, no, no, we're doing this. So here I am, a slave to my own wanderlust. At least I've got these new shoes, and uh, waiting is going to be a joy from now on. Just wide enough to get through there. I just find these places and I need to know what's there, what's around the corner. What's around the corner that doesn't have six other people on it. Not that I mind, I really don't. But just to find that place that no one else sees or rarely sees is just what drives me to do these trips. Now it seems to open up as it looked like it might have back from uh, the original vantage point at that obstruction. And this is why I do it. This is why I need to check around the corner because this could be some magic spot who knows, but not knowing is what I can't stand. Oh yeah.
Nice Laker. Another one. Thanks, buddy. day four and it's probably gonna be a pretty slow day uh, rain is in the forecast all day the upside is that day four is the perfect day in its seven-day trip for a rain day and a rest day so at least uh, my the tendons in my wrists and forearms and elbow uh, they can get a rest because they always seem to act up uh, and I can just read relax and make coffee too bad. Feels good to be out of the tent. I've been in there for the last six hours or more just reading and napping. So it's been restful. But uh, it's drizzling still and it, uh, showing no signs of stopping anytime soon. Based on the forecast I had from a few days ago, it, uh, it'll likely continue overnight. Well, it finally stopped raining for a bit. It's dinner time now, so I'm going to make some. I'll probably just keep the fire going for, I don't know as long as it stops raining. Because it's something to do. A little sense of purpose. It's quarter past 10 and still kind of raining. Can't tell if it's just falling off the trees or, or new rain, but still lots of moisture coming down in any case and uh, everything's damp. The, uh, the lens won't even stay uh, clear. It just keeps fogging up with all the humidity. Everything's everything's damp in here, so it's kind of unpleasant. Just can't wait to get out and for sun to come through, which might not be until tomorrow or even the next day for a really good sun. So uh, I've just been reading, but getting pretty bored. Well, this might be the best I get for a while, so I'm taking it. It's not a long way that I have to go. Uh, the portage is just to the south of this island, and then I think I'll have a tailwind on Pathfinder, so it should be a very manageable route. I'm on Pathfinder now, and trying to spy a campsite from afar. A few mosquitoes on that trail. Because uh, I have no idea where they are on this uh, lake. As you can see behind me, Pathfinder is a big lake and you could waste a lot of time looking for a campsite when you don't know where one is and it's spitting occasionally just threatening to rain <sighs> mosquito uh and i don't see any campsites yet i've been paddling for a while found what i hope is the correct portage trail into uh, Claim Lake and it's nasty out. I'd rather be portaging under the forest than out on the lake right now and I can't find a campsite on Pathfinder. The middle of this portage gets uh, pretty mucky. Certainly worsened by all the rain but it looks like this is permanently wet. The ends aren't too easy either. There was quite a bit of elevation gain. Uh, someone had discarded their puffer along the trail, if that gives you any indication. Back to the halfway point to take the canoe, and then I'll be into Claim Lake. 
still overcast, but uh, I couldn't stand the thought of going back into the tent. So just did a tour of Claim Lake. It's a nice spot, and I have it to myself right now. Uh, in addition to the wet weather, there's the distinct feeling of fall in the air. The mornings and evenings have been pretty cool, and just now looking at the canopy ahead of me, I can see it's starting to change. Just the, the beginning stages up here, north of Elliott Lake. If I go back down south, it won't feel this way, but up here it's definitely on its way. I've still got four layers on and it's mid-morning, so. The thought of losing summer fills me with dread every time, <laughs> every time I think about it. But fall's a beautiful season, but then that's the end of this season, of the backcountry season. So that's upsetting. And even if I got into winter camping, still can't do this. Float on the water, whip a cast out. All I can do is drill a hole in the ice and go like this. It's not the same. Still nice, still enjoy it, but this is the best. The sun is finally out. Feels amazing. Didn't get any fish, it trolled for a good two and a half hours or so and no bites so hopefully fish for dinner keep saying it hopefully fish for the next meal and the next meal but i'm at the bottom of the food bag so that's the processed stuff it's just chicken noodle soup it'll do for now I was hoping to pack up dry, but uh, everything is covered in uh, thick dew. It's not quite seven and I'm on the water. So making good time. Should be a nice cool portage, 1360 meters. And then into Dunlop Lake. And then uh, checking email and voicemail and such. And if I don't have any job interviews or anything I need to head back for, I'll be starting another trip this afternoon. I'm on pace to finish this 1360 in about an hour. And by comparison, the thousand meter Diablo Portage on the Steel River Loop, which is, uh, you know, close to 30% shorter, it took me three and a half hours. So this is a pretty good one. It's pretty cool to paddle along the lake like this. Just black silhouettes of islands and shoreline, and then white. I am on Lac Aux Sables, doing the Bark Lake Loop, and it's five o'clock. I finished my last week-long trip a few hours ago. Uh, stopped in town, Elliot Lake, on the way, and Massey, and then booted it up that gravel uh, highway, and now I gotta boot it up some lakes. I'm trying to get into Big Trout Lake, which is a ways up and it's already five o'clock, despite my best efforts, despite being on the water before 7 a.m. this morning when I left my campsite. It's mostly a trout uh, trip, but uh, there are also pike in Bark Lake, and I'm hoping to get into a trophy because I feel like I am due for one. All right, I'm leaving Lac Aux Sables behind, and I'm into the river section now.
so the one campsite marked on Big Trout Lake is uh, it's not a campsite it's a it's a cliff um, based on where I lined it up oh maybe yes oh yes yes somewhere half decently flat to put down a tent so it's it's dark basically and uh, I'm on this huge lake I don't know where anything is and uh, I came over to the island because people like to camp on islands so I figured it's a good spot as any to try and if this hadn't worked out I'd be paddling around this huge lake and not in a good situation feel much better there's somewhere to put down the tent it's not great but the alternative is rock just not good shrubs trees okay thank god i need to set up real quick this is me just finished and i'm kind of in the trees but it is flat enough one more thing right now because i'm such a chatty kathy right now um i just find it funny that about two and a half weeks ago i had that awful night getting into the queen elizabeth the second wildlands trying to get into scrabble lake and i committed myself to never pushing it to the last second to get a campsite on a new route ever again and here i am although this time it wasn't completely my fault the campsite marked on the map was a cliff so how could i have known anyway i think i'm done talking I was reeling in what I thought was a snag. It's a little yellow perch. I didn't know they had perch in here. The ministry only lists um, lake trout for this lake. Ow, ow, ow. Sorry, buddy. Come on, there. <laughs> it's good to know. It's afternoon now, and I can't remember exactly when the solar eclipse was supposed to happen, but I thought it was close to now. And I don't want to miss it, but I keep trying to look at the sun, and I'm going to go blind. Fish on, super rig, head shakes, some weight, some, not none. Just trying to keep a good bend in the rod. It's not that heavy or anything, but I'm just pointing it up like that to keep the bend. Keep this thing pinned, because there's some weight there. It's got to be good four pounds. Oh yeah, probably four. Nice, it's a nice trout. Beautiful colors. Okay, this is gonna have to do. Here it is. Nice trout. As if this lake wasn't already too perfect. There are a couple of kind of gravelly, but mostly sandy beaches, beautiful, pristine. Anyway, this is awesome. It's really beautiful. Water is pretty chilly, 
but refreshing because it's hot. I kind of feel like I can see the moon poking into the sun, but it's so hard to see. This is nice, super nice, and I think it'll be a perfect spot for some red wine later. I did have uh, an obligatory swig last night, but it's too tired to enjoy it, but this will be perfect. Waking up to pouring rain, which is fine. That was forecasted. I dodged the rain yesterday somehow. Had a great day. Uh, so, it'd be a good rest day. I could use it. All my uh, joints in my arms, my shoulders are all really sore. So, it's good. The wind is really nasty out there. It's swirling all around, probably up to about 30 kilometers an hour. So, I gave up on uh, getting trout for dinner. Just gonna make some instant potatoes. There are some bony little swifts here, and I think that might be a portage over there, just based on the fact that there's a clearing, but I don't see any tape. Another one. Maybe two minutes later. Ah, oh, I love this fish. My favorite fish to eat and my favorite fish to catch and battle. Oh, it's pretty long actually. Nice fish. Oh yeah, oh, oh, watch the net job. He's still on. He thrashed right as I tried to net him. <laughs> I got the side of his body. That's not where you want to net a fish. Come on, I'm gonna let you go, buddy. Just come here, there we go. There we go. Oh, so colorful. What a gorgeous fish. Okay, get this out quick. Okay, okay, come here. Oh yeah, oh, what a beautiful fish. Oh, oh no. <laughs> ah, okay, go, go, go. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, the color on that, his belly was golden with a bit of some red. Uh. This section near the uh, east end of the 1189 is pretty nasty. Just this little bit, maybe uh, 20, 30 meters. I already got my shoes, my, well, <laughs> my shoes that are supposed to stay dry. I got them soaked with all this wet mud, it slipped off the log. You have to kind of balance across it. And I had all my gear and uh, couldn't balance, so I went in. Oh, just went in again. The logs are so slippery. Oh, my, oh, my shoes just <laughs> filled with mud. That's nice. The wind has picked back up. Ever since I got past the Narrows and turned more westerly, now the wind is much more in my face. So I really can't wait to get to camp. About two more kilometers, but that might take an hour at this rate. All right, I'm in business. 
Made camp. Chores are done. Rinsed out my socks and shoes and they're drying there, hopefully. Or just getting more wet, depending on how much it rains. Pretty good tent pad. Clean water filtering. Some good soil left a great pile of, uh, of sticks there. So I can get dinner on quickly, which is really appreciated right now. So I'm gonna make some pizza. I've still got some red wine left. And that all sounds amazing right now. Got some extra clothes on, I'm feeling good. This is one of the nicest fires I've had all summer. Most enjoyable fires anyway. I actually need it right now. Well, more than usual. Cause I'm cold from the weather today. And uh, it just feels really good. Sometimes in the summer, you're just having fires for, uh, I don't know, it's kind of obligatory. And uh, you're not even comfortable, it's too hot. You're sweating basically if you're anywhere near the fire. But this feels so good. I've got a few layers on now and warming up. So it's really nice, combined with some vino. I'll be warm in no time. Today was not supposed to be this nasty. There's a 20% chance of rain and it spat most of the day. The wind was what made it worse though. They look kind of purple to me. <laughs> not their normal color. So I'm gonna fire them up. Oh, <laughs> oh, that feels amazing. <laughs> oh, that's so nice. Soak it up, boys. You've earned it. You've earned it. Mm. That smell of freshly cut or smashed conifers just puts me at ease. I wish I could bottle that smell up. When you wake up cold and tired in the backcountry, there's nothing like making coffee on the fire. It's quarter to ten, and there is sunshine. Ah, feels good. At times like these, my sense of wanderlust is trying to grab the steering wheel and take me kilometers down that way into lands unknown and I have to rely on my brain at these times to you know keep a firm grasp on the steering wheel because I don't want to make today a long day <laughs> still recovering from yesterday and I've already paddled quite a bit today but uh, yeah as long as I am breathing and physically able I'm going back there someday that's a promise to myself. Big, big fish on. The rod absolutely doubled back on this guy. Oh boy, this is huge. This is huge. Woo. It's big. Oh, I just couldn't see it, like I got a little look at it, just like a little reflection off the sun. Oh my. Wow, I thought I snagged. Oh boy. I am genuinely terrified to lose this fish. No. Oh, I thought I felt the weight fall off there for a second. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> yeah, definitely lake trout. Spat bubbles 
when it got close to the boat. And uh, pike don't fight like this. Close. Oh no. Oh, it is a pike. It's a monster. It is a pike. It's absolutely huge. I was thinking this section of the lake wasn't deep enough for lake trout. Oh my goodness. This is the hardest fighting pike ever. This is probably the biggest pike I've ever caught. If I catch it. Oh no. No. No, it's not well hooked. It's not well hooked. I don't want to exhaust it either. I'm trying to get it in. But it's huge. Okay. Here's a chance. Yes! Yes! Okay, it's not my biggest pike. I was wrong, but it is. It might be the heaviest. It's thick. Okay, I'm gonna get it unbuttoned here. Wow, I, I thought my battery just died there, but I wasn't recording and it went to sleep. I thought it was recording. Anyway, I was just saying that this fish is uh, 15 pounds. Oh my, yes. Yes. What a giant. Set to zero. Oh. oh, that is 18 pounds minus a bit for the net. That's my biggest, my biggest pike by weight. Wow. Oh, thank you. What did I say at the start of this trip? I've been due for a trophy. Oh, I didn't get a length on it. That was silly. <laughs> it was low 40s though. Maybe 41, 42. And the heaviest pike of my life. Dinner's done, dishes are done. Some nice driftwood is processed for a bonfire tonight because it doesn't get any clearer than this, so I'm going to stay up for some stargazing. And my shoes are dry from yesterday, which is so fantastic. Such a good feeling to have these on again. Just love this hammock. There's nothing like lying here when you're really pooched. Six thirty and it's really cold this morning. I could just stay warm last night. Had some good stargazing last night. Saw a few shooting stars. There was a barred owl hooting in the middle of the night. I know because I was awake for so much of it. <laughs> my wrist, my right wrist especially, is still killing from two days ago. It has little strength. And over the next day and a half, I've got to get myself all the way back out of here, which is a pretty long way. Oh, there it goes. If someone wanted to do this route up to Boumage and didn't want to portage the 1189, it would almost be worth, it would be worth walking just as a trail for the pines here. There are big ones all over the place. That's a pretty big one. Same with this white pine. This red pine is massive. White pine, white pine, white pine, white pine. Tons of them. More here. All right, got this beautiful trout dispatched. 
about two and a half pounds which is super for one person and it looks meaty too that's gonna be so good sneaking a first bite always do oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's done. Oh man, it's so good. Mm. Look at that. Mm. The eggs actually came out really nicely. I'm never really sure what to do with them, and um, the other times I've eaten them, they haven't been this good, but really good. Mmm. Much fishier but really delicious. Wow. Couldn't get any better right now. I just feel so at peace. So at home. This is my home. <laughs> I should change my hometown on Facebook to nature. Backcountry is, uh, it's like my church sometimes. I just feel so spiritually fulfilled in moments like these and so many other moments. It's a grocery store as well when I'm taking fish or blueberries. It's a school <laughs> when it's teaching me life lessons, hard lessons sometimes. It's a gym. Not a great gym. Still, keeps you reasonably fit. It's like a spa on other days. If you're just lying in the sun, maybe on the beach or in a hammock. It's a lot of things, the backcountry. Gives you, you know, mostly everything you need. Yeah, it's just awesome. It's the best. It's home. Although, as I think about it, the backcountry is definitely not a few things. One, it is definitely not a hospital. I always worry about having um, not even just an injury, but something internal that I can't do anything about. I uh, passed a kidney stone for the first time uh, in December, at the age of 29, which is my current age, and it was the most agonizing thing in the world, and I was worried it was appendicitis, and if that happened out here, that would be an absolute nightmare, and I got thinking about that yesterday because uh, I had something, some weird feeling in my stomach that kind of reminded me of uh, the feeling when the kidney stone was coming on, and that was quite scary. Um, the backcountry is also not where friends and family are. You might have a couple of friends or family members with you, but a lot of people aren't here. And uh, it is also uh, is not a job. It doesn't pay well. Uh, so it's not everything. <laughs> but I absolutely love it, nevertheless. Back on big trout and got a nice, nice trout here. Beautiful, beautiful colors. Oh, oh. hold on, buddy. Oh no, sorry, sorry, sorry. There, there you go. Thanks, buddy. Uh, I can't record hardly anything today because my batteries are all really low. Uh, but uh, yeah, got that one on the spoon with uh, the three-way swivel rig with two ounces of weight down there. It's been uh, killing it this trip. Different fish, same story. Thanks, buddy. Back into the shallow section of the lake. And no giant laker. It's 
So that dream is going to have to wait. But it was such a fantastic trip. I love this spot and it's definitely one of my favorite routes already instantly. Anyway, just uh, maybe 10 minutes away from the lunch. And looking forward to five nights in civilization. I am at the launch on uh, Madagamasi Lake, heading to my favorite place in the world, Donald Lake. Uh, but this is really gonna suck. I, uh, I've already changed my plans for the route, but I still have to paddle five kilometers plus into a brutal headwind. So uh, I better get a move on. It's already, I think, noon, and I have a long way to go, and uh, it's gonna be a really tough day. At the first portage into Gold Lake, and the wind is just raging. You can see what I mean about fall being on the way here. This little maple is really red and beautiful. Not looking forward to the cold temperatures, but I am looking forward to the colors, and I haven't seen a mosquito yet today, so that's beautiful. And uh, this portage is a little bit rugged, and when it's wet, can be kind of dangerous. This section here is tricky, it's slippery, and steep, and if I fall, it's going to not feel good. It's just awkward. Now I kind of have to jump, jump this part. It's not easy jumping with a canoe on your back. Okay, good. On to Colin Scott Lake. And this is, in my opinion, one of the most beautiful lakes in Ontario. Again, camp is just less than 100 meters that way. And uh, I got into a fish. Nice way to start the day. Thanks, buddy. There it goes. Historically, I think people used to uh, try to keep places like this to themselves, but now that you can find so many places on the internet, I think that mentality is dying. And that's why I have no problem revealing, if you want to put it that way, this spot. I didn't invent it, I didn't create it, I didn't find it. Someone else posted it and it allowed me to access it. And uh, the good thing about sharing spots these days is that um, there are so many now Everyone, everyone has a, a hot spot, a place they love, and if everyone shares theirs, there's no issue. If no one shares them, then the few that leak out, they get uh, overused and overfished. But uh, I would, I would hope if this place, um, if traffic increases over the over the years here, that uh, it's treated like the jewel that it is. It's so precious. Just look at this place. I know I showed it yesterday, but from this vantage point, it's even more beautiful. The cliffs, and then you look down the south end of the lake there. There's a strip of an island there. That's my camp in there, on that point. Great view of the whole lake. Some more little strip islands here. There's a bay off that way, just around the corner, that's not even visible. It's good fishing in there. I'm in heaven. I'm at the side of the cliff, which is over there, and I'm going to see if I can get up the side of it for a view.
it's basically just a bushwhack hike up here. There are some trodden paths that maybe were established once, but it's just a bushwhack from what I saw. But um, one of the most worthwhile hikes I've ever done. It is breathtakingly beautiful here. Unbelievable. Look at the water down there. That's what I mean about it being so clear. Wow. What an incredible view. I don't want to leave. Let's see if I can walk along the edge here. No, I'm not going to take that risk. Wow. And the rock here, it overhangs. So it's actually not, like there's no rock underneath that rock. So this stuff is just kind of hanging. Oh, wow. I'm just going to drop my lure down and jig it. Oh, there they are. School of bass on it in seconds. <laughs> it's so amazing. And there are a bunch more and the water's so clear I can just see it all. It's a one of a kind fishing experience. You get this kind of action and this visibility. Just had a nice fight with this lake trout and as it was coming up it was releasing bubbles as they do and the bubbles were just like crystal little balls in the clear water under the sun and there was a smallmouth bass following it waiting it for it to regurgitate some food for it to pick off it was beautiful to watch and as best as i can tell this is a male so i'm gonna keep it this belly isn't, isn't bulging so that's going to be lunch. Unfortunately, that fish was a female full of eggs. So that's disappointing, but I'll eat them. I just wish uh, that fish could have spawned instead, but nothing I can do now. Uh, I got the scrap pieces here, belly meat there, two fillets, and uh, fillet them on the birch bark sheet here, which is great. It's a perfect cutting board. Nice and smooth, and uh, and you can burn it after to avoid any possibility of attracting bears. All right, lunchtime. I'm doing some in fish crisp for the first time in a while. I've been doing Tex-Mex, and I did one right on the grill, steak style. And that's a delicious way to do it too. No seasoning, no oil, nothing. Just a little smoke. Mmm. <laughs> so good. Mm. All right. Look at that. Oh, baby. Oh, man. That's so good. Mmm. Today couldn't get much better, any better. Incredible hike, incredible lunch. Now I'm just doing the hammock, might fall asleep for a bit. It's too nice.
Look at this place. It's so unreal, it's so beautiful here. It's achingly, hauntingly beautiful. This is the bay on the west side of the lake. That's the middle of the lake out there. And that's the southern arm of the lake. It's all glass right now. type of day that makes you feel really lucky just to be alive. There's some good in this world, Mr. Frodo, and it's worth fighting for. <laughs> I'm such a dork. Um, but that, say, that quote from Lord of the Rings rings true right now. The world's messed up, especially environmentally, but when you're out here, uh, connecting with nature can't help but feel like you want to fight for it do anything to protect it this lake is crazy <laughs> uh, I was coming through the narrows here out of Jack's Bay and uh, and I just had the lure um, in the rod holder or the rod and the rod holder and the lure are just off. Whoa, what a jump! Oh, I wish I had that on film. That was a good two feet or more. Oh, wow. Oh, man. This is a nice bass, and there are like three or four other nice bass around it. Uh, so, yeah, the lure was just hanging off the boat. Basically, we were just running subsurface, and it smashed it feet away from the canoe. Oh, man. <laughs> Oh, whoa, I better get this thing in the net. It's a nice bass. <laughs> Not a giant, but it's nice. Wow. Whoa. Nice fish. This could be a nice one. Haven't got a look at it yet. But it hit like a ton of bricks. okay so many here that it doesn't even concern me see if I can get it again or a different one not this cast but uh, oh yep no there it is <laughs> oh my <laughs> it's a nice pass It was almost at the boat. I was thinking I wasn't going to get one on that cast, but it did. Oh man, it's off again. Swatting mosquitoes. Sloppy. <laughs> so on the following cast, another fish. Saw it was small, so I gave it some slack, let it get off. Saw the lure fall out of its mouth. Another fish snatches it right up.
came to one of my favorite lake trout hot spots on this lake <clears throat> and uh, got into two trout on two casts. Unbelievable. Pretty close to where I caught the one that I kept yesterday. But uh, anything that's not really big, <laughs> uh, it's completely slack. This guy's just rolling. Uh, anything that's not really big, I'm trying to just let it off in the water. A, it's better for the fish, and B, I just don't need it. Not for a picture, not to eat, not at all. Jeez. But it's hard to let them off sometimes. Cliffs in the background, turquoise water, beautiful forest, beautiful day. I'm just in heaven. I th was thinking I might leave on Sunday to beat some weather that's coming through on Monday and Tuesday, but I don't think there's any chance of that. <laughs> Today's Friday and I need more than two days more here. So I'll probably leave on Tuesday or Wednesday. This is what the visibility is like here. It's a good 10 feet down and it's so clear. You can even see 20, 30 feet down. It's kind of like being at a big aquarium all the time. Just standing there looking through the glass, looking at an underwater world you've never seen before. Another nice fish. Third one today. <clears throat> this lake is just full of fish like that. Thanks, buddy. The wind has picked up quite a bit and I'm tired, so I'm just gonna fall asleep in the hammock for a bit. Can't imagine anything more relaxing. The water is lapping up on the shore. The breeze is rushing through the pine needles. Sun is uh, out, but it's not boiling hot. It's nice, pleasant, and I'm just swaying here on the verge of sleep. Had a couple of smallies today, including this one. And he's got some real battle scars on him. I have to wonder what would have caused that. There aren't any pike in this lake. Getting there. Finally got a good one on. That's a four pounder there. Hooked right in the corner of the mouth, kind of on the top a little. Looks out. Thanks, buddy. Whoa! <laughs> First cast after dinner. Good bass on. Oh, oh it's coming up for a jump. Oh, no. no. Oh, watch that job. <laughs> There we go, nice. Biggest one on the trip so far. Nice bass. That's definitely four. Belly on that guy. Beauty. Thanks, buddy. Gonna climb up there, take in the sunset. It's turned into a beautiful evening. This is yet another spectacular view on Donald Lake that I didn't even know about. First time being up here. And I canoed over, but I'm pretty sure you could just walk here from camp, which is right there. Wow.
Oh, the storm is running amok on my site. There's quite a bit of water there. And uh, my other dry space, the tarp, this arm got ripped off. So uh, basically all my firewood is now wet or damp. And the floor space is all wet, so I don't really have a dry place to sit. Uh, so it's going to be a wet day. Here I was thinking how warm and dry I was as I slept in. Meanwhile, the water was just pooling up underneath me. My tarp was getting soaked. My tarp shelter. It's just a precursor to fall storms. Today is September 4th, and... Uh, Fall storms can be the nastiest of all. They are the nastiest. They're wet, of course, but then cold and worse than anything windy. And that's not good because I have I potentially will continue camping for the next month, two months, I don't know. I might camp till the end of October. <clears throat> Depends when I get a job. And my body just can't take fighting those winds anymore. My, uh, my hands and elbows and forearms are so beat up. Today is the 50th day I've spent in the backcountry this summer. And 68th day in the backcountry if you include spring. And that takes a toll. Spent the last hour and a half digging out this uh, fire pit and destroying it really. Got the garbage over there. All the stones all around. It was just really gummed up with dirt and with small stones and what it needs is just big stones that allow air to flow through better because it wasn't breathing very well before so now is the fun part get to uh, rebuild it all right put the finishing touches on my trowel is irreversibly blackened as are my fingernails but it's looking pretty sharp Using the remaining stones that uh, were just piled into the old fire pit, I stacked them in between these two trees, which I'm calling uh, an Anukshuk for dummies. If I may be so bold, I would like to start a new tradition, and I may be so bold because there's no one here to stop me, uh, a new tradition of visitors to this site. If you happen to see this video, uh, add to it and eventually, I don't know, maybe we can get it eye level. I'm bored. Fish on. <laughs> it's just about to describe what's going on. It's uh, almost 9 a.m. and I'm close to the portage back out of Donald Lake into Colin Scott. Uh, and there's a ton to do today. Uh, I've got to get out of here, which is probably five to six hours minimum. And uh, then I have to get back to civilization resupply, get groceries. Um, I need like at least a couple hours online just to catch up and uh, oh, it's off. <laughs> oh, no, it's back on. Oh my gosh, it's insane. The action here. <laughs> I should have focused more on smallies. When one fish loses the lure, another one is there to pick it up. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I need some time in civilization and then I need to like figure out where to where I'm camping tonight, and uh, also need to get details for my next trip, which I still know very little about. Man, I'm glad that first one dropped it. This one is better. Incoming. This thing has got some heft to it. It's still. Oh, yes! <laughs> Donald Lake strikes again. It's 
big one, big bass. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that's fun. <laughs> that's a nice, nice smolly. Great colors on it. Beauty. Thanks, buddy. Gone. All right. <laughs> Bonus. Oh, it's hard to leave. Uh, <laughs> st oh, getting bit. Rod just danced a little. Oh, there it is. Yeah, big paddle stroke to set the hook. And big fish, maybe. <laughs> Decent. Oh, I love this place. <laughs> but it's so hard to leave, it's so stunning. There's potential for rain today, but right now it's just beautiful. Got that cliff again. Oh man, I could look at that all day. It's approaching 1.30 and I still have lots of Madamagassi to cover. This headwind is not helping my timeline today. And I would say that there's no way I'm gonna be able to do what I need to do in town today and then get somewhere and set up camp. It's pretty much no way. So I will probably just like hang out in a Wi-Fi until min in a in a McDonald's uh, until like midnight using their Wi-Fi, and then uh, drive somewhere with a coffee and uh, sleep in the car in a parking lot. This is the life of a vagrant.